Anyhow, it's my pleasure to introduce Asif Khan with Mark Dibovec. I did it, yes, uh, who are going to tell you all about Huku AI, which is a fabulous new technology. Thank you. All right. Hey, everybody. Uh, Asif Khan, co-founder and CEO of Huku. Many of you I see familiar faces. So uh, I built my first company, CareMerge, uh, sold it, uh, scaled it to hundreds of locations uh, over the past several years. But now uh, started Huku, which is short for hook. Cure means care anywhere. And basically, it's a um, messaging app uh, that you can roll out in less than 30 minutes. So just like you get a text, you log in, you create your account, and you're collaborating with your team. Um, the concept of Huku really came from uh, post-acute care, a lot of people, it's very difficult to use technology, and there are lots of technologies. But what is one thing they all know how to do? They text all day long, right? So the concept is, and the product is, how do, why, do we, why don't we build a technology messaging app that has uh, algorithms, automation, and uh, other things in it, so it accelerates the communication in post-acute care, right? Because many times, what, what are the outcomes really depend on? The outcomes are depend on timely communication with the right person, so right actions are taken. Well, many times, those timely discussions don't happen. Things get delayed. I called the doctor. Doctor never responded. So I took the easy way out and pressed 911, send the patient to the hospital. Well, with, with Huku, you don't need, the front lines don't need to know who to bring in and what their phone number is. Through our algorithms and processes, we automatically pull the right people in and it accelerates the decision. So that's what we do. We're in over 500 organizations. 90% uh, of Huku users say one to two hours a day, which means they're less burnt out. When they're less burnt out, guess what? The turnover is on these facilities is about 30% lower than industry average, right? So that's what we do at Huku. I'll pass it on to Mark, who's going to talk about uh, how they're using Huku at the Admiral at the Lake. So Thank you. Mark. Thank you. So hi, everyone. My name is Mark Dubovic. I'm from the Adamo at the Lake. We're in, located in Chicago. Um, I've spent about uh, 21 years' experience in senior living. So I've been around uh, somewhat, paper and pen. I'm used to that. Um, recognizing communication is really important. And you know, we, we saw that we needed to have additional support in our community. We brought in an NP group to give our residents additional support. But once we did that, we added a lot to the mix. You've got now new providers, more providers, uh, to be able to communicate with the staff and even communicate with the families. So you, you, know, you used to have one physician, and that would be the person who would speak to your staff. And now you've got a nurse practitioner there, and you've got off-hour nurse practitioners. There's a lot going on. So that's you know, something that we wanted to really improve, and that's when we started working with Huku. So you know, there's there's many challenges. Any any senior living provider will know this. There's common challenges. Um, culture. You want to have an inclusive culture with residents and staff. Compliance. Um, here we're talking about a lot of PHI data, um, and you want to make sure that you don't want to you know fall through those pitfalls. And avoiding litigation, regulatory compliance. Support employees with access to clinicians and, and, and supervisors. So if an employee is spending all day chasing after a physician or trying to get a hold of their supervisor, and they're doing it because it's related to resident care, if you can minimize that and have an easy communication tool between the you know, staff nurse, let's say, and the physician, it makes their lives a lot better. Um, high, which, in turn, happy, happy employee turns into higher quality service, which, of course, turns into higher census. Um, we pulled our staff and, uh, on all these metrics, and um, we, got, you know, we got feedback from them. Um, and I'll, I'll go over that shortly. Um, so solutions that fail me, right? Sending a memo, phone, even a text message, email with families. They're not necessarily HIPAA compliant, or they're generally not HIPAA compliant. Uh, pen and paper from shift to shift reports. Um, progress notes and phys physician's order that back in the day, right, before electronic medical records, those were all on paper. And EHRs, and there's some wonderful EHRs out there, they're built as a medical record platform, not necessarily as a communication. So this is something that can integrate seamlessly with an EHR platform. Um, this is something, I'll give an example, where our nurses, a uh, physician will contact our nurses and give an order to, for whatever medication, ABC medication. Uh, that nurse can see that order, carry it out, and also seamlessly integrate it into the medical record so there's nothing lost in translation. So how did Huku help solve these challenges? Um, so challenge number one, inclusive culture focused on residents and staff. Um, there's a couple different things. Um, everything's in one place. Everything about the care of that resident, besides the medical record, we've got this communication. Any communication is in one place. 
Huku can be used not only for staff to communicate with a physician or nurse practitioner, but you can turn it over and have staff and the physician communicate with families on a HIPAA secure uh, environment. Um, there's transparency. The staff will um, see a message right away and everybody will know who saw that message. It'll kind of motivate them to get things done. Um, and then again, real-time access. It's time is money, right? Time is, is so important when you're making critical decisions. You can get that answer from the physician right away. And of course, you know, innovation, who's not trying to innovate? So one of the next things we're trying to do is uh, do shift-to-shift -shift handoff reports, currently done sometimes by pen and paper, by email, but that's something we're moving on. And, and as I said, we pulled our staff and 83% and said they are more connected with their teammates, um, with, their, with the next shift or with their other nurses and, and, and supervisors. Uh, challenge number two is assuring private secure PHI data and avoiding litigation. Again, it's quick transparency. Um, we actually started doing pre-rival notifications. So Mr. Smith is coming in this afternoon and he has this need and he needs oxygen and the physician's aware if it's a new physician. The rest of the team's aware so everything can be ready for that, for that patient. Um, again, reduce burnout. There's, there's timely status updates. And one of the things you know, we really found is in, on the litigation aspect, medication errors. The doctor said one thing and then the nurse understood it as something else. Well, here you've got it in writing from the physician. And again, you've got it time stamped. You've got all these different uh, things built in. And it's texted, right? It's HIPAA compliant, it's texted. So it's much faster. Right, right. Um, who could definitely save time? 100% of our staff said it saves time uh, getting hold of physician. Um, it gives immediate access to the client's history. They can look up lab reports. They can look up uh, you know, different, different <coughs> diagnostic um, it's been very responsive to the, to the resident needs, real-time communication. Um, those of you who remember used to page a doctor and tell the receptionist or a concierge, hey, I've paged Dr. So-and-so. When he calls, please find me or please call me out. You know, and then another floor says, hey, we need to speak to that doctor too. You, you don't have to worry about that anymore. You know, you'd wait 20 minutes for a doctor to call back and then you know, I gotta go take care of this resident. And then when the doctor calls back, you're in the room, you don't hear the page. So it's, it's a whole mess. And here you really get real-time uh, uh, you know, real communication. Um, and there's definitely time savings for everybody. 100% um, of our staff said uh, who increased communication with partners by more than 75%. So again, there's that real-time, everybody's familiar with texting, everybody's got messenger apps and things like that. It's, it's really you know, easy to integrate and easy to use. Yeah, one of the key things that we do is we have, we call it patient-centered uh, channels. So each patient becomes a channel and you can then bring all the different collaborators in. And Huku also pulls in the right collaborators at the right time to speed up the communication. So that's part of the Absolutely. how we Absolutely. do it. And we've got everybody, you know, all the different providers, all the different disciplines um, on that. Right, and this way you kind of have all the context in one place, yes. Does it pull data from other software? Yes. Mm -hmm. so Right. Yeah, we're integrated with different EHRs. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. um, improving outcomes. Again, you've got real-time connections. You've got real-time answers. You've got transparency, which equals accountability, timely updates, and you're going to have a better you're going to have a better outcome, a better resident outcome. You take all these things. Right? Who said, you know, communication was a challenge, and now we feel it's really not a challenge anymore. So you know, we're moving forward with all this. 83% um, of our staff said that they can make care decisions faster until waiting for that return phone call from the nurse practitioner or, or the physician. Or the nurse practitioner can say something and the physician will chime in, I agree, or let's do this. So there's, there, and that can be done quickly. That makes a huge difference. Um, and just you know, summarizing everything, there's a positive culture, um, better patient outcomes. Uh, you know, you want to focus on quality. It's again, you're going to have a happier employee um, who, you know, in a better and in in you know, just a better environment because they're not running around chasing phone calls and they're able to get a hold. And if something needs to be done quickly, there's a supervisor or a director of nursing or somebody can chime in and, and add in their feedback or dietitian or physical therapist. Um, so 100% of, uh, of our staff said that they are satisfied with the communication and coordinating care. It just really makes a lot smoother. Uh, care coordination. Yeah, and it allows you, today, you know, people are communicating using somebody communicated with email, somebody communicated text, somebody called with phone, somebody handed a sticky note. Those are five different things your people are using. That means it's not a standardized process. So you take that away, give them one place, and now you have full visibility, and you can hold them accountable. Hey, this patient, Mary said this to Asif. Asif, why didn't you do that? 
right? No more, you, you don't have to wait for, to, to, you, you're not gonna ask somebody to show me your text. <laughs> but in Huku, <laughs> you can see what's going on in the patient channel. Yes? Do you have data around that, of how that's helped optimize your communication workflow, your community? Yep, of course, that, otherwise why would yeah. we? We have surveyors. We have. You, you have data like email down, phone down, all that stuff is down. Right. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Um, so we chose Huku again for all these reasons. Compliance is a huge part of it. Um, our team's more connected. They can seamlessly communicate with each other because again, everything's in one place. Uh, Data-driven analytics. We can pull down analytics if when something someone's read something, how often they're on the platform, um, and if we need to do you know some coaching or something like that. Culture building again. You're more together. Uh, patient-centered collaboration uh, and, and creation of the care team. Um, one of the things I didn't mention yet is that we're using actually Huku. So this is, again, we're using it from uh, nurse, let's say, to physician. We're actually doing a flip side where we have residents in our independent living where they can actually communicate with their practitioner, with the nurse practitioner, and say, hey, you know what? I have a headache today and I'm, I have a cold. And the nurse practitioner can respond, okay, you know, let's do a telehealth visit. Boom, they've dropped it in a secure Zoom link and they're doing a telehealth visit right there and then. So we're not only using it from uh, provider to provider, and then also, you know, family. We're, the residents themselves in independent living uh, are using it as well to communicate with their providers. Yeah. One thing I would add is like it's a, what we are seeing is in the post-acute care organizations. Like Mark is excited because they started out their journey. Hey, I'm doing my existing business. Okay. I want to improve my existing team. I want to save, if, increase efficiencies, and make them make everything better. They can use it. What Huku is doing is really taking that and moving it into value-based care. So think about what is value-based care? It's patient-centered and real-time risk stratification, right? If you know those two things and you can make sure you have accountable parties, accountable finally in transparent way, who was supposed to do what over what time, and think about automation, like so if I do something, then the next thing opens up to the next person in a different organization that, hey, Asif did this, now you and your organization need to do this as a next step. So basically standardizing all this process across the continuum, patient-centered, with full visibility, now you got something for value-based care, right? So that's where Huku is, is going. A resident is, that's an in independent living, we can follow them in to skilled nursing. And again, we know that we have that data on that patient from whatever we had in independent living, and we can start carrying it over right away, and, and we can you know, let everybody know what's going on. Um, Huku has consistently ranked higher on G2, different, you know, different surveys uh, for apps and technology. Um, and thank you very much for listening to us. I appreciate it. Um, yeah. There's contact information. Right. And that, uh, yeah. Just a quick question. Great question. Historical perspective? Which, it depends on which data you want. You don't want the nitty gritty chatter in your EHR messing that up. But if there's this a detailed note or a doctor's note or a prescription or something that they provided, then yeah, we can mark it. You can mark it and it'll go into patient chart. And that's the. We're getting there. So you're, you're, you're on our roadmap. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're two step you're almost two steps ahead. <laughs> so all your communications happening through the platform itself. Yes. Now. Yep. Yes. So uh, my question would be around adoption for partners. How do you get partners, the nurse practitioners, and the physicians to partake in an app? You're right. So the interesting thing is that's who that's who who, who sells to physician groups and nurse practitioner groups. Got it. They're the ones, so they're, your clients. they're the clients. They gave it to the skilled nursing and these facilities to utilize because everybody is a win-win, right? So physicians, what do they want? They want to have more encounters, more facilities to support, and they want to do it fast. And not to mention cut cost on answering services and all this chaos that they have to do. So some of our customers, physician groups, they grow from uh, 15 facilities supporting to 33 having only six NPs to 15, serving 1,000 clients to 3,000. 